Wow, round two in the bag, and that was fun. That had everything in it, didn't it? I think everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. For me anyway. I don't know about anybody else. I think a lot of people felt the full wrath of the super coach gods this week. Um... Didn't really go too well in comparison to last week. One extreme to another. Just under 900. I was a proud Ponger owner. A proud Jackson Ford owner. A cheese owner. And I captained Dewey on the day that the Tigers played their worst game in years. That is just a concoction cocktail of rubbish given to me on a platter. Reflected in the score. So, top 23%. It's not, look, at the end of the day, it's round two. The difference between someone that's ranked 32,000 and someone that's ranked 3,000 is probably the difference of about 140 points. So you could honestly make that back next week with a good captain choice and one of your players going well. It's early days, don't stress about it. All you have to do from here is just plug some holes in your team and I've got about three of them. <laughs> so Let's go over what I liked over the round and what I'm going to do going forward pending team list Tuesday tomorrow. So we'll start at the top. Sonny Luke didn't get as many minutes as I thought he would, but again, I don't have him in my side to play. I have him in my side to make money. He's still got a negative B or it's pretty low. I'm not quite sure. But he's just going to stay there until he makes some cash for me. The cheese failed again. I personally think that the cheese is just a placeholder in that side. I really think he's there to do one job. And that's to dish it out from dummy half. And that's about it. I, I genuinely think that that's his job. I can't see him running the ball that much this year. He's a shadow of him for, of his self last year. He hasn't got Grant to look up to anymore. I don't think... I, I really... I'm not expecting much from the Cheese, and he is on the chopping block this round. So I will go over my trades at the end of this podcast, at the end of this video, and I'll talk about through my trades, but Cheese is probably going to be one of them. Cotter and Welch... Look, I don't expect too much from the front rowers. They did a job for me. Uh, Welch, 51. Cotter got a 52. Same, same. Look, front rowers, if they get 50, sweet. Happy days. Stefano got a try at the end, which was a double movement, but I'll take it all day of the week. He will make cash. Franklin Pele did nothing again, so... <sighs> I don't know what to do with him. I really don't. I've got other problems to fix. He is not on my radar to fix at the moment, but I'll get to him eventually. Um, for feeder, I have no idea how he got 69 points. I watched that game and he done nothing. So I'll take 69 all day of the week. Um, he stays in my side. Obviously, I'm not going to move him out if he's making if he's scoring 69 fairy points. I don't really care, but. Carrigan 63 did a job. Hop good. To the people out there that captained him, well done. You had bigger balls than me. So I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I just didn't have the kahunas to do it. So all power to the 2% that did. Egan Butcher. He's just underwhelming at the moment, isn't he? Egan Butcher did pretty much nothing 
in comparison to what I thought he would be. But it's very, very hard to move players on like this that are around his price when you have other problems in your side to fix. So I'm not trading him out this week. He's going to have one more week. The Roosters have the buy next round, I believe. So I'll see how he goes this weekend. He's up against the Rabbitohs. I'm not expecting much at all. I don't think he'll do much at all. I think the Rabbitohs win that game. I think Butcher tackles his ass off and gets about 40 to 50 again. I, he's not going to have any attacking up, so I'm upside in that game. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is what it is. Jackson Ford, concussion in the first two minutes. Sweet. Four points. I played him. It hurt a lot. Um, Sam Walker, 92. He had his hands in everything, as I said he would, and he just looks dangerous. Yeah, he got the benefit of a few things that went his way where it should have went Tedesco's way. But look, I'm not going to complain. I mean, 92 for a player that's covering Cleary. Pretty happy with that. Do we... The Tigers just look really bad. Now, I'm trying to understand how a side can improve substantially in their roster and look as bad as they did last season. Is it a coaching problem? I don't know. But they played against a night side where their key playmaker in, in Ponga, who I played and got one point, was concussed in the first minute How can they lose to the Knights? Bra Jaden Braley went out. So, no Ponga, no Braley. That's half their spine gone. And they lost. I don't know. Ponga. Ponga's gone for me. Unless, unless he is named tomorrow, teams as Tuesday. I just have to wait and see because, yes, he got concussed, but he may pass the protocols. It's just a wait and see for me. I really want to move him on. I'll explain my trades, as I said, towards the end, but at the moment, he's a trade. At the moment, he's a trade, but I will be checking the teams this Tuesday, tomorrow, and if he's named, it's going to be a very interesting wait and see. So, but anyway, uh, Valentine Holmes, um, the C's is on him at the moment because I optimised for this week, but a 47, pretty lacklustre performance super coach wise for Valentine Holmes again. Uh, I'm not going to trade him out because he's got the Warriors at home this weekend, so he could definitely bounce back. I'm worried about Lachlan Miller because if there's no Ponga and Jaden Braley could be out as well, I don't see much attacking upside at all in the Knights. And no attacking upside means no attacking stats for Lachlan Miller. At 593k, that's a lot of money for a player that has no attacking upside. So, again... I've got a lot of potholes that I need to fill in this team at the moment, and I I can't fill them all in at once, so a little bit of surgery to come. Alamotti did okay. Wardrick did okay. Look, these type of players, Taruva, I played Taruva in my side, so it was Taruva. The second that Taruva starts to score tries, he is going to be a gun. Like, he's just constantly churning out these scores. Well, not constantly, but the last two games, 40s, 44s, it's, he, he's just a try away from, from being that player that decides whether, you know, you go up a 1,000 in your ranks or not. So it's just, 
the Panthers don't seem to be wanting to go down that right side. And Taruva seems to just be moments away from getting that try, and it just doesn't seem to be happening for him at the moment. Ah, it's one of those things, isn't it? So, but anyway, Tedesco got a 55. He should have got about 120. He missed a couple of um, clear-cut opportunities for tries there. I was very happy that Tedesco didn't go big because on top of the absolute carnage throughout the rest of my team, if he went big and I kept the C on Dewey, I would be in a world of hurt right now. Way more than I already am. So, yeah. Pretty happy about that. But anyway, I my trades. This is how I'm thinking about going. So, I'm thinking about trading Tedesco out. Now, Tedesco out for Welsh. So, Welsh. So, in goes Walsh. Tedesco for Walsh. The Broncos have a great draw coming up now. They're at home against the um, against the Dragons this week. The Dragons did look okay against the Titans, but the Broncos are a different beast to the Titans this year, and I think that is a great trade, to be fair. Tedesco is going to drop in a lot of money. His BE is going to be quite high. He won't score well. I don't think he will score well against the Rabbitohs, and then they have a buy. So... I don't think he's a hold for me, Tedesco. And I think Walsh has got um, plenty of money to be made right there. So that's my first trade. Ponga. I'm going to go Ponga to Mam. Which gives me the ability... Oh, what's happening here? I don't want Egan. For some reason, Egan just went into my side. Okay, so I've got Mam, I've got Walsh, which gives me 230k to upgrade the cheese to Reed Marnie. Now, I tossed up between Reed Marnie and Wade Egan, and the only reason that I've gone, or two reasons that I've gone with Marnie over Wade Egan, is because Wade Egan's scores over the last two games have been inflated by tries and I don't think I don't think he's going to be scoring tries week in week out and I think once he comes up against a side that's pretty decent defensively and let's be honest the Roosters aren't I think he just churns out that 40 to 50 and uh, yes he's going he, he don't get me wrong Egan's going to make you money but my goal is to get Grant, and Marnie is 574k. He's closer to the price of Grant. He also has a BE of, I think it's zero. He's got a break even of zero. He's going to make cash. He's going to make close to 100k, um, which brings you closer to, to Grant. And I've got 134k in the bank. So those are my trades. If I wasn't to go those three trades and I was to go ma'am to someone else, it would probably be ma'am down to Katoa, which would obviously give me the funds to go the cheese up to Grant. But I see more upside in Mam than Katoa, and I could play Mam this weekend where I don't think I would play Katoa, if that makes sense. So that's my thought process. If I wasn't going Reese Walsh, so say if I've got 134k there and I was to go and I was to trade Walsh, let's take out Walsh. I've got 688k there. Now, there really isn't much going for me at all here. Like Brimson, 673k. 
I'm not putting the hammer in my fullback. I'm not putting a psycho in my fullback. Oh, so close to Garrick. Look at that. I, I'm not going to run Turbo and Garrick at the same time in my fullback spots. It's a bit silly. There really isn't much. I feel like... I feel like Walsh is the only real standout option for me at the moment. So that's how it looks at the moment. Complete the trades. So at the point, at this point, it's going to be Marnie starting, Cotter Welch. I probably, oh man. It will depend on whether or not Jackson Ford gets named. If Jackson Ford passes his protocols, I'll play Jackson Ford over Stefano. I'm pretty much forced to play Egan Butcher. I'm going to run Dewey and Ma'am. Dewey has, even though the Tigers look terrible, Dewey has a, a good matchup this weekend. So... What do you do? You're going to keep Dewey, aren't you? So, it's going to be Walsh, Dewey, Egan Butcher, and Stefano on the bench, pending whether or not Jackson Ford gets named. Actually, no, sorry. I just realised that Manly aren't playing their bye this week. They're back. So, Schuster goes into my starting side. Walsh. So, it's going to be Walsh, Dewey, Schuster, and possibly either Jackson Ford or Egan Butcher. That's how, I'm, that's how I'm thinking. Because the Warriors are up against the Cowboys. And if that's the case and Warriors do turn up and give them a, a tough game. Well, let's say if the Warriors turn up the same way that they turned up against the Roosters. Jackson Ford will take most hit-ups and do a lot of tackling. And probably grind out a 40 to 50 and he just you might honestly you may as well just flip a coin between Ford and Butcher I don't know I really don't know at this point I don't think Stefano's going to score a try again that's probably the only try he gets for the next 12 weeks but anyway that's how it's looking Turbo, Warbrick, Alamotti, Holmes, Miller Ezra Mam, Walker, I'm keeping Cleary on the pine because I believe that Cleary is going to be my way to Hines. Hines is coming back soon. It's happening. And I would personally rather run a Sam Walker and a Hines at this time until the Panthers start to look a bit better. The Roosters will get better as well. And I think that the better the Roosters get, the better Walker gets as well. So... I mean, if, he's, if Walker's churning out a 92 in a Roosters side that looks terrible, then you don't need to be a genius to figure out that he will score tons. Um, hop good for Fida Carrigan, Cotter Welch, Marnie. That'll do it. And let's talk tomorrow after Teams this Tuesday pops up and let's see if, um, let's see if there's any surprises, which I'm sure there will be. Until then, thanks for tuning in and I shall talk to you all soon. See ya.